is chapter 20, Blood Vessels, part one. Here's a view of a lot of the blood vessels in the human body. There are a ton of them because they go basically everywhere in our body. Uh, blood vessels are forming a closed circulatory system, so the blood flows around and around, going throughout the body and also to the lungs for oxygenation. Uh, when blood leaves the heart, it travels through arteries. So arteries carry blood away from the heart. Arteries will branch and get smaller and smaller until they become arterioles, which are microscopic. And then finally, you'll get to the capillaries. Capillaries are a separate kind of blood vessel. They do not fall under the arteries category. And they're where the exchange of fluids between the bloodstream and the tissues occur. So basically, as blood flows away from the heart, it gets goes into smaller and smaller vessels. Blood then starts to return from the heart after leaving the capillaries. It will then enter venules. Venules are microscopic versions of veins. And venules will continue to fuse together, becoming larger and larger vessels. And finally, the biggest veins will carry the blood into the heart itself. So blood, as it returns to the heart, starts in small vessels, and those vessels get larger as it approaches the heart. When you look at the wall of a blood vessel, such as an artery, so this is an example of an artery, you see that it has three layers. It has the tunica interna, the internal layer that lines the inside of the blood vessel. Then the middle layer is tunica media, and then the superficial or outer layer is tunica externa. And then the space inside is referred to as the lumen, and that is, of course, where you would find the blood. Tunica intima is made up of simple squamous endothelial cells, very flat, smooth cells, trying to um, keep the inside of the vessels nice and smooth to reduce friction. The tunica media level has lots of smooth muscle tissue. So the smooth muscle tissue of the vessel of the artery is found here. And the muscle tissue can contract to constrict, vasoconstrict the blood vessel, reducing blood flow. Or it can relax, vasodilate to increase blood flow. And then the outermost layer is tunica externa. And it's just basic connective tissue wrapping around the blood vessel holding it to neighboring structures. There are two types of arteries. There are the elastic arteries. Elastic arteries are the largest. The biggest of them all is, of course, the aorta coming out of the heart. And elastic A arteries have lots of elastic fibers in their walls. So this little graph here, all this is elastic fibers. And this makes the elastic arteries stretchy so that when the ventricles contract and blood gets forced out under high, high blood pressure, the elastic arteries will expand, stretch to compensate for that. And then when the ventricles relax and the elastic arteries return to the normal size, this will help to continue propelling the blood forward along its route. So the elastic arteries are under the highest blood pressure possible since they are directly after the ventricles. Uh, elastic arteries will eventually branch into smaller arteries, and you'll get down to the muscular arteries. Muscular arteries have a large tunica media, so the thickest layer for muscular arteries is the middle layer, tunica media, where the smooth muscle tissue is found. And they help to control blood flow by vasoconstriction, vasodilating. And the blood pressure in muscular arteries is still pretty high. Um, as a matter of fact, the blood pressure we talk about when we talk about blood pressure is actually coming from muscular arteries, specifically ones in the arm. The muscular arteries will branch and branch, get smaller and smaller until we get to the arterioles. Arterioles are microscopic. They still just barely possess all three layers, but they're basically one cell thick for each layer. It's super thin, very, very minimal. Now, the arterioles are able to control blood flow into the capillaries. So they have, the arterioles have these little pre-capillary uh, sphincters. At least the arterioles that are sending blood to capillaries are, have these pre-capillary sphincters. And those sphincters can contract. And when they contract, they prevent blood entering capillary beds 
or they can relax, and when they relax, they allow blood to flow into capillary beds. And this is just to maximize blood flow to places in the body that need it the most. So if you were doing a lot of um, pull-ups, you would have reduced flow to the leg muscles, but increased flow to the arm muscles. Capillaries. Capillaries are their own category of blood vessels. They are the smallest, the simplest of the blood vessels. They are just one thin cell thick. So they are just simple squamous endothelial cells, all in a sheet rolled up and connected to basement membrane. Because, of course, all epithelial and endothelial tissue needs a basement membrane. So capillaries only have a tunica interna. They do not have the other two layers. They are as minimal as you can get. And this is important because they are the vessels that allow for microcirculatory exchange. Fluids carrying oxygen and nutrients will leave the capillaries and go to the tissues, giving them the nutrients and the oxygen they need. And then fluids surrounding the tissues will enter the bloodstream by capillaries, carrying the wastes and carbon dioxides that the tissues want to get rid of. And then, of course, we have similar things happen in the kidneys to get rid of wastes and in the lungs to get rid of the carbon dioxide. So the capillaries allow for microcirculatory exchange, the movement of fluids between the tissues and the bloodstream. And as you can see in this lovely picture down here, the red blood cells are about the same size as the capillaries, just barely fit in there. All right, there are many capillary beds in our body, more than we could count. And each capillary bed has somewhere between 10 to 100 or so capillaries. So that here we have the final arterial leading to a capillary bed and the precapillary sphincters controlling the blood flow through those capillaries. However, there's also a thoroughfare channel. So even if blood flow is cut off to the capillary bed, blood flow will still go from the arterial straight into the venules, from the arteries to the veins, straight from the arterioles to the venules, so that the blood can continue to flow and return to the heart. So while blood flow is cut off to the blood capillary beds, the thoroughfare channel makes sure blood still flows through the body. All right, that brings us to venules. Venules are the microscopic version of the veins. Venules have um, either two or three layers. The uh, postcapillary venules only have two layers: interna, tunica interna, uh, sorry, intima, and tunica externa. Um, while the um, so postcapillary venules, postcapillary venules, they only have tunica interna and tunica externa. They do not have the smooth muscle tissue, and so postcapillary venules that help form the thoroughfare channel and come directly after capillary beds, they also allow for microcirculatory exchange. They also exchange fluids with the tissues, nutrients and oxygen to the tissues, wastes and carbon dioxide back into the bloodstream. After that, the postcapillary arterial uh, venules, postcapillary venules will branch into muscular venules. Muscular venules have all three layers. So they have the tunica media, they have a single layer thick uh, smooth muscle cells. And because of this, the muscular venules do not allow for microcirculatory exchange. Fluids, and et cetera, do not leave and enter the muscular venules. Both sets of venules, however, are very distendable. They're able to expand. And so they actually hold a lot of the blood that is in our body at any given time. Here is the vein. So again, the vein is very similar to the artery in that it has all three similar layers, tunica intima, the internal layer that's nice and smooth, tunica media, the smooth muscle tissue, and tunica externa. So again, has all three layers as expected. However, the vein's walls are much thinner than arteries and has much less smooth muscle tissue. This is because Veins are under extremely low blood pressure. The blood pressure in the veins is very, very low. Because of the thin walls, veins also have a larger lumen, so they carry more blood than arteries do. And because of this low blood pressure, the veins have to have 
valves. So they have these two pocket valves uh, all along their length, basically um, only allowing blood to flow back toward the heart. So blood flowing in the correct direction toward the heart will cause these pouches to lie flat against the wall of the vein and blood will move along. However, anytime blood tries to backflow, go the wrong direction, it'll fill these pouches up and they will close up preventing blood from backflowing. This low blood pressure that veins are under is also why when a person has blood drawn, is drawn from veins because the, uh, it's easy for the veins to heal after being punctured and it's easy to get the blood out. If someone accidentally took blood from an artery, when they pull the needle out, the blood would be squirting out of the person's arm because of that high blood pressure. Again, here's a vein. You can see it has these two little pockets that form valves all along the length. These pouches help to prevent backflow. And this is so very important because veins actually are under such low blood pressure that they cannot overcome gravity. So in order to get blood back to the heart, um, the veins are strategically located in places that allow different things to happen, such as in skeletal muscles and around skeletal muscles, so that when those skeletal muscles contract, they will squeeze the uh, veins, pushing the blood along in the direction desired. Again, valves prevent the blood from going the wrong direction. Blood can only go one way, back toward the heart. So we have the skeletal muscle pump, veins near skeletal muscles. We also have the respiratory pumps, so the veins in the abdomen and thoracic cavities um, feel the pressure when we breathe in. When we breathe in, expand the lungs. This puts pressure on structures in the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. And this pressure will squeeze the veins, squeezing the veins, sending blood back toward the heart. And finally, there is some smooth muscle tissue in the veins, so they can vasoconstrict a little bit. To move blood along, but but only only a little bit. Varicose veins. Varicose veins are when valves in veins stop working right. Valves don't close completely, and so there's a black backflow of blood. This backflow ends up causing pooling of blood in certain areas, such as varicose veins in the legs. This condition is somewhat painful. Um, for people with varicose veins in their legs, often they, they're supposed to wear very tight, um, basically special socks or, or um, something like that to squeeze their legs to help prevent the blood from pooling in those veins. All right, uh, this will stop for this part of the lecture.